We're joined now by University of Kentucky head coach John Calipari and student athletes Aaron Harrison, Trey Lyles, and Tyler Ulis. We'll ask Coach Calipari to make an opening statement, please, and then we'll take questions first for the student athletes. Um, it was a good win for our team, and um, I thought Cincinnati played well. They didn't, uh, they didn't back away. They came right at us, and uh, I always like it when my team shoots 37 36, 35 percent and wins in double digits. It shows them they don't have to make shots to win. You can miss them all. No, you can't miss them all. You can miss most of them. And you can still win games if you defend, you rebound, and you, you play that way, make your free throws, and they did. Questions for the student athletes from Kentucky. If you have a question, please raise your hand. The microphone attendant will make their way in your direction. Please state your name and media outlet before presenting your questions to the student athletes. First question. We're going to go to Tim right here. Coach, Tim Warsinski from the Cleveland Plain Dealer. Take a deep breath. And if you could uh, just indulge me and talk to me for a minute about what Cleveland people can expect next week when Big Blue Nation comes rolling up I-71 and, and, and the connection that you guys have with your fans, which in, you know, in that part of the country, we don't have a lot of big college basketball. Um, do you mind if I do it? Uh, go ahead, Coach. Yeah, OK. Um, the, um, our fans, I, I just use one term to kind of define. They define themselves, but they're crazy. And they come, you know, we, our building seats 25,000. And many of the people that will be in Cleveland could not get tickets to our building. So they go to every tournament game. I mean, we had 10,000 people at the early rounds of our conference tournament because they couldn't get tickets to our rounds. And they were like watching the other teams just to be able to say they were a part of it. Um, I would say all the restaurant bar owners are going to be very happy because if they can't get into the games, they're going to be sitting right there. I don't think they drink, but they will be there watching those games. Um, and they, you would say, well, they can't get all the tickets. They somehow figure out how to get tickets. I have no idea how they do it. But it, there'll be a lot of blue in, in, uh, in Cleveland, no question. Questions for the student athletes from Kentucky, please. <clears throat> if you have a question, please raise your hand. There's one in the back on the left side. Andre Chapman, Analyze Sports. Uh, this game, to me, it seemed it was about toughness. And uh, for any one of y'all up there, um, how do y'all feel y'all responded to uh, Cincinnati's physicality? Let's have Aaron take that one and Trey. Um, I think we responded pretty well. Uh, um, there, we, we knew it was going to be a tough game like that and, and an emotional game, so we should have to match their intensity and match their aggressiveness. So. Trey, same question to you. Uh, like Aaron said, we were ready for it. Coach prepared us for it. And, um, you know, we went out there and we matched their intensity and matched their physicalness. Uh, like they both said, uh, Coach prepared us for that. We knew how they would come out. And, we, you know, we just had to play through it. Looking for questions for the Kentucky student athletes. There's one on the left, Jeff. Yeah, Jeff Washburn, the Sports Exchange. Um, Aaron, the, it was really close there with about three minutes to go in the first half, and then you finish on a 10-0 run. Uh, Coach Davis told us that you know he felt that was a key point in the game because two or three of those turnovers really deflated them. How important in retrospect were the last three minutes of the first half? Um, it was really important. We knew we had to make a run because it was a back and forth game until then. And uh, we, we just got, we got together and, and the staff and the players, we just, we just knew we had to make a run and, and we had to make big plays and, and that's what we did. Continuing with questions for the student athletes from Kentucky, we have three on the left side. <coughs> Start right there, left of the aisle. <laughs> this is for any, all three of you. Another Willie dunk just seems common nature for him now. What was your guys' response after this one? Was this something new for you guys that he had not done before, or was it just the same old thing? Aaron, then Trey, then Tyler, please. 
I mean, no, it's <laughs> nothing new for us. He, I mean, I think we we all when he does it, we all scream like we did it. So it's like we're just used to it. Uh, same thing Aaron said, but uh, you know, hopefully after that, we just want him to get going. You know, from having a big play like that. Um, it's nothing new to us. Uh, we expect that from him, and you know, it just gets us really into the game and you know, hypes up the game more. Another question on the left side in the middle. Uh, Brian Fox from Bearcats Sports Radio. Uh, my question is for any of the players and even Coach Cal. Um, coming into the game, what did the scouting report say about UC's big men like Octavius Ellis and Gary Clark and Coriante DeBerry? Trey, you want to take that one? Um, they just told us that they were going to be physical. You know, they're going to push, you know, and like get physical with us and try to back us down inside and, you know, shoot hook shots, shoot layups, and then uh, offensive rebound. That's a big part of their game. Coach, do you want to answer that at this time or? A little later, later. Um, we, we knew um, they were a great offensive rebounding bunch, and um, we talked to them about it, that they create angles, and uh, we wanted them to try to score over top of us because if you give them an angle, they, they, they get to the rim and score baskets. I thought our kids did a pretty good job against them. We're looking for questions for the student athletes before we let them return to the locker room and rejoin their teammates. We have one in the front left of the aisle. Gary Graves, AP, for Trey or Harrison, uh, for Aaron. You all expected a physical game. I mean, you expected this to be a, a, a tougher game. But when you look at some of the other physical games, I mean, was this probably the, the hardest one throughout that you all have had to, had to deal with? Aaron first, please, then Trey. Um, yeah, I, 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 uh, maybe so. I, uh, they were just, we knew we were ready for the physicality, I think. And uh, the big guys really fought hard. and. Uh, Trey far hard as well, so. Trey, question for you as well. Uh, like Aaron said, you know, we, we've had it all, all season, so we were prepared for it. You know, that's what every team's plan is to go against us. So, you know, we just went out there and matched their, matched their intensity and their physicalness. We have a question on the right side. Yeah, for the freshmen, uh, a year ago you were in high school. Now you're playing in front of you know, 20,000 Kentucky fans in Louisville. What was the experience like in your first uh, tournament venue? Trey first, then Tyler. Uh, it was a great experience. You know, it's almost like a home game with all the uh, Kentucky fans that were there supporting us. And, you know, it was exciting and uh, just happy to be a part of it. Tyler, same question to you. Like you said, it was a great experience. Um, I'm happy to be here. It's a dream come true and you know, can't wait to keep going. Is there a final question for the student athletes from Kentucky down in the front all the way to the right? Uh, Bill Livingston, Cleveland Plain Dealer. Do you guys ever play like a road game? I mean, with the way your fans travel? I guess conference games you do, right? Is that about it? Aaron first, then Trey, then Tyler. Um, I mean, sometimes, but it hardly ever. Our, our fans travel everywhere we go, so. Trey. Uh, just like Aaron said, hardly ever, you know. Um, Wherever we go, there's a lot of BBN fans there. Like we, they both said, um, they travel everywhere we go, and we've had a couple where you know they pack the crowd on us. We'd like to thank Aaron, Trey, and Tyler for joining us here in the main interview room. They're going to head back to the locker room, which remains open at this time. We're looking for the first question for Coach Calipari. Please raise your hand. The microphone attendant will bring the microphone in your direction. We have one all the way to the back and all the way to the right. Will Clark, News Radio 840 WHAS. You said at the beginning of the season this team needed to get a punch in the mouth. Being in the tournament, uh, sort of a second season starting, is this the punch in the mouth this team needed? Well, I, I, I just want to stay on the the course we're on, which I keep saying, they're not going to do it on their terms. If you want to do something unique and special, you you all, we shouldn't be saying the things that we've been saying from the beginning of the year right now. Um, but this team has a will to win. They have a heart. Um, the good news is there's enough guys that if two or three aren't playing well, we can still survive. Um, what they learned today is we don't have to shoot the ball well, and we can still survive. Um, you just want them going into every game saying it doesn't matter what happens, we can still win. And that's the mentality I want them in. But they're, uh, I got a great, great group. They, they, uh, 
They handle things that are coming at them. People are plain physical. They're not, no one's going to surrender. They're not going to surrender. So if you have to fight, you got to fight. I mean, I'm not going to lose going down not swinging. And that means the games will get physical. Um, when you ask it, but we, we had many physical games like this. I mean, this one, like, the most physical. I mean, we, I can go through our league and tell you there were physical games. Um, but they're learning each time out. I still have the youngest team in, in the field, and, and I would say one of the ways is try to get after them physically to see if you can rattle them. They have handled all this stuff with class. They've done a great job. Um, you know, they don't respond. They just have an even keel about them, which is, uh, which is kind of nice. If you have a question for Coach Calipari, please raise your hand. There's one on the left side of the center aisle. <clears throat> Gary Graves, AP. For all the talk about what Cincinnati was able to do physically, I mean, you all exer kind of exerted your will as, as well. And we kind of, did that, the way that they did it in a game like this, did that surprise you at all? Or what impressed you the most about well, it? Well, I, I was really happy, Trey Lyles. Like I keep telling everybody, we're training him as a three, but he's a four. He can step out and shoot. He can make free throws. He's good with the ball, but he's 6'10". He's 6'10". And so when we put him next to the basket, I thought he was really good. I thought Carl did some good stuff. And in the second half, Willie did it. You know, last game, Willie went one for six from four, two feet. Today, he missed a couple. And I said, you, you're not, we're not having that. They're, they're not even, you, you know, turn and try to dunk the ball. But he came back in the second half, and I thought he made baskets, and he got that dunk. And, but, I, you know, our guard plays solid right now. I think from Andrew to Tyler to, to Aaron, you know, Devin's not making shots right now. We told him after the game, hey, you got to keep shooting because there's going to be a game we need him to make shots or we can't win. And it just didn't happen to be this one or the first one. You can miss all these ones. It doesn't matter. Next one's coming up. We may need you to make some shots. But, you know, we, we play around the goal pretty good. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We have one on the, in the back to the left of the center aisle. And we'll get up front to the right of the aisle in just a moment. Coach Cal, uh, Coach Davis talked about the free throw line being the difference in the game. What do you feel the difference was in this game? Um, you know, we, we made some big plays when we needed to to get a gap. We are a terrific free throw shooting team, so he may be right in that regard because we really do shoot free throws well. I mean, the last five games, including this game, I think we're like at 76%. So if you foul us, the free throw line's going to make a difference in the game. And... Um, you know, but I, I thought we made, like Aaron made that big three in front of us, and, and Andrew made a big drive, uh, an and one, and those are the gaps that we need. And then our defense comes into play. I mean, we're big. We're seven foot. I don't know how many blocks we had today, but, you know, we're, we're a long team. Uh, we can go to Bill first on the right. Uh, is foul avoidance one of the things that, that I mean, you guys can test shots, but, but is this just a natural kind of margin that you have often? Well, we, you know, there's all kind of ways of doing this sport, coaching this game. We, we're trying to teach not to foul. There's two ways we don't want to get beat, from the three-point line and free throws. We don't want to get beat that way. If you're going to beat us, beat us some other way. We try to drive people off the three-point line. This is no secret. Oh, he's giving up. See, every coach knows what I'm doing. We don't want to give up threes, and we don't want to foul. So we're playing to end a half with six fouls because now you're never in the bonus. That's how we play. That's how we coach. Now, that's not how everybody coaches, and there's all kind of ways of doing this. It's just what we do. Um, play the percentages. Um, I was asked coming off the court, about, you know, they're playing, they're slowing down this game. I'm like, eventually you got to shoot the ball against two seven-footers. What I don't want to do is trap and scramble and give up threes and layups. Why would I do that when I've got a great defensive team? I could do that. I did have to 
say, are we winning this game or losing this game? I mean, there's literally all kind of ways of doing this. That's what we do. Will we speed teams up if we think we need to? But let me say this, in this tournament, and I've coached in many, you're never pressing the best teams into submission. You better play half-court defense. You can press bad teams into submission. A good team's too well coached. You can't just press them and trap and scramble. They're going to end up shooting layups and free throws or dunks. And so we will press to get into people's legs. We will trap at times. But, you know, I just I want us to play without fouling, play great solid defense, give them one tough shot, no, not a three. Don't let, them, don't let them get to the three-point line. Drive them off the three. And that's what we're doing. On the right side of the center aisle. Daryl Bird with Cats, Paws, and Lexington. There's a couple of times where Andrew and Aaron both drove the lane and finished kind of with authority. Can you speak to their development from the time they got here, not just flailing, hoping a foul would be called? Yeah. But they, Andrew had one in the first half. I took him out. But they're getting so much better. Um, everything about their games in the last year, you know, they've been with us two years. It's, like, ridiculous how much they both improved. They're both winning players now. They're both winning players. Um, they both are not afraid to make game-winning shots because they're not afraid to miss game-winning shots. Um, they'll make free throws. They're both defending better. Now, Aaron gave up a layup at the end of the game. He just stopped playing. Andrew gave up a three during the game where he just stopped on a guy, and the guy moves and gets a three. Reality of it is those are few and far between. Um, those two right now are playing as well as any guards in the country. And they're 6'6", six, six. they're 220, they're good athletes, they're really skilled, both left and right. You can't say force them left, guy will go left. You can't say force them right, he'll go right. They're both really skilled. And, and again, you know, I don't think they get the credit. They carried us to the final game last year, those two. You watch the tapes, those two carried us to where we were. Struggled a little bit in the final game, but we'd have never gotten to the final game without those two. And now they're starting to do the same thing again. It says something about who they are as players and, and, and their heart to win and their will to win. Is there a final question for Coach Calipari? There's one right in the center on the left of the aisle. Coach, yesterday you said Ewell's is like the spoon in the milkshake. He mixes them all up. I mean, he just seemed to do everything today and getting the ball out to whoever needed it. Five assists today. What what has impressed you the most about his game? Well, the, the greatest thing about Tyler is that he'll do whatever it needs to be done. Um, he wants to play with Andrew. And he has no problem with Andrew being the point, I'll play off the ball. I mean, that's what makes him unique. I mean, he's not worried about me and let me, uh, this is my, he's not like that. If I said, who do you want in with you? He'll say Andrew. Like, that's first to Andrew. He won't even, I won't get it out excuse me, out of my mouth, that's what he'll say. So today, a big play, Andrew drives, throws it to him for a three. Bang, he and Andrew are like chest bumping. That's what you want to see in this. This, this thing for these guys, they just won, I told them after the game, you just won 36, never been done before in college basketball, and 50 years from now, you'll probably look back on it and say, wow, 50 years from now. Um, the, the parity and the balance and all the other stuff in college basketball makes this ridiculous and you have guys like Tyler that probably don't even realize what they're doing because they're so young they're 18 and 19 year olds um, but I'm having I'm having fun I'm, I'm a little under the weather yesterday and today but I'm having fun seeing these guys go and they they are working through stuff like things are happening in the game and they're working through it themselves and that's what you want you want them to feel empowered We'd like to thank Coach Calipari for joining us here in the main interview room.